Yo, what's good, y'all? It's your boy Ant Hen Dog, and we're back to it. You know how we do it. Basketball stories: Indiana Glory with Larry Bird, Reggie Miller, and Isaiah Thomas. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Go ahead and like this video if you like this video, and go ahead and write some in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about these three players. These are legends, y'all. These are really legends right here. Larry Bird, Reggie Miller, and Isaiah Thomas. Like, okay, okay, I get it. I get it, the, the Indiana glory. With Larry Bird being from French Lick, Reggie Miller playing for the Pacers, and Isaiah Thomas playing for Indiana University. So this is gonna be a great video. This is gonna be great. Shout out to the Bird gang. I know y'all watching. Um, shout out to y'all. And then hopefully we get some Reggie Miller and Isaiah Thomas fans to watch this video. But I don't want to do too much talking. I want to get straight into this. This is a 48 minute video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up. Probably going to break this up into maybe three videos. Yeah, probably three. Probably like three or four. I'm not, I'm not too sure. It's kind of, kind of going to see how, how it goes. But let's get into the first one. We got basketball stories. Indiana Glory with Larry Bird. Reggie Miller and Isaiah Thomas. Three goats, man. Let's get it. Indiana, Indiana, Indiana. Okay. Hey, guys. Which one of you two is going to come in second? I'm weak. Probably Reggie if it's a shooting contest. <laughs> I agree. I'm going to come in second now. <laughs> if you know, you know. If you don't know what Larry Bird talking about right there, then y'all not real Bird fans. I know the whole Bird gang know what's going on right there, but uh, yeah, they, that's that's kind of funny, you know. They 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 paying homage to some old school Larry Bird classic moments, but that's dope, man. That's that's super dope. Hey, Larry Bird is just unconscious. Larry Bird was so tough, y'all. Reggie wasn't no slouch either, though. You are watching what greatness is all about. This is a treat for me because I am amongst royalty. Indiana royalty. You via Chicago. You being Larry Bird, an Indiana native. You guys both coached me. I might be a little nervous here, but... <laughs> This is awesome, and I want to go back to that Papa Shot thing, and I want to go back to, to 1988 and the whole who's coming in second comment. <laughs> we were laughing about that because I I did a deep dive on that because I was like, well, who were the other participants? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was Craig Hodges was in that, Dale mm -hmm. Ellis, Detlef Shrimp, your teammate Danny Ainge, Mark Price, yeah. Trent Tucker, and I've heard different stories about this. So you're here to finally set the, the record straight. <laughs> when I walked in the locker room and the guys were sitting there, and, you know, they're nervous. Now, you, you got to understand that a lot of these guys came off the bench. Right. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, they're going to go out there in front of 20,000 people, 46 eyes on them, shooting the basketball. Right. That's got to be intimidating. Mm -hmm. For me, I like that because I knew the pressure was on them more than me. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I just looked there. I, I was really just teasing. I, I looked around and everybody was looking at me. I go, who's coming in second? <laughs> and nobody said a word. I thought maybe they thought I was joking, but maybe they thought I was serious. But it was really a joke. Well, then I had to go out and win it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what he did. Next year, I got, I got lucky and won it. You know, you know, it's all feel, all rhythm. Right. And, uh, and some go in. And I like it when it's at the last two racks. That's mm -hmm. when I like it. Because of, you know, crowd builds, things get going. He's still going to drop one here quickly. 14. This is a tie for the money. Put the hand up. Yeah. Classic. I got to put my video in right there, y'all. It's only right. So the drama was, it just happened. And, and uh, 
it goes in and I walk the winter circle and I gotta get out of here, man. <laughs> that was too close. Bird is a set shooter and he's got the technique down. With the warm up on. A lot of people say that you had an unorthodox hey, shot. Hey. Where did that form, that yeah. follow through come, come from? Well, when I was little, the, the one thing I had growing up, I always had coaches around. I used to shoot from the hip. Remember when you yeah, went strong yeah, enough mm -hmm. and fired up from the hip? Mm -hmm. And finally, he brought a basketball out there that had a handprint on it. He said, put your hand on there and put your other hand on it and get it up here and start shooting this way. Push, push. So I did, and finally it got over here, you know. Right. I mean, I, you can't see if you do this. <laughs> you, know, you, can, you can see, but, you know, Reggie, you, you know, you guys know as, as shooters that... It takes a lot of practice. It does. So let me let me ask you this, Larry, right? When you talk about shooting. For a while in the 80s, everybody kind of changed their shot. And everybody started. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice, like, everybody, like, you know, kind of moving some, it over? some young players try to, to move it over yeah. a little bit. Just for full disclosure, I grew up, as we all did, being a Laker fan. Yeah. You know? But I patterned my whole game how I wanted to a play and approach after this man. Yeah. So I got like weird looks because it was Larry Bird this, Larry Bird that. So when you talk about imitating shots, yeah. um, especially when you would be like on the baseline and you would be coming off to your left and you're shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and one. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> and I had different shots for different times right. in different places when I was on the floor. Yeah. And when I would go left, all of my fadeaways were because you know, that side, and they couldn't block it. Yeah. They more. couldn't block it. You're a Chicago kid. Yeah. How in the hell did Bobby Knight go to Chicago and get you from going to DePaul? So Coach Knight comes to the house, and he walks in with Quinn Buckner and Wayne Embry. And coach comes in and he goes, you know, I have Mrs. Thomas now. Now I'm sitting there and this is my mother, right? So this is coach. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't never even talked to me. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> a, he's like, you know, offer your son three things. You know, he'll get a good education. You know, I teach him everything he knows about. I know about basketball and he'll be a gentleman, right? Those are the three things that he was offering. And, you know, we were like, well, this is going to be a short conversation. And, you know, eventually my, my brother and Coach Knight get into, like, a big tiff. And, and so my brother challenges To the point where they're taking off, Coach getting ready to... Yeah, my brother challenges Coach, like, hey, you know, hey, we can take this outside. <laughs> Coach Knight said, all right. <laughs> 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 he started rolling up his sleeves, right? And everybody is like, oh, no, no, you know, the whole room is like, no, no, you can't do this, man. And so I look over at my mom, and my mom is like this. Uh -huh. Right? And, you know, that's, she ended up sending me to Indiana. But Quinn, to this day, says to me, the thing that he regrets most is that when you first went down to school, that he wasn't there. Like, I think Quinn was... Yeah, he's playing in some kind of tournament. Yeah. And, and he said he, he, felt, he still feels bad about Larry not being, he not being there for Larry the first two weeks or so that he was at school at Indiana because he felt, he still feels that had he been there, you know, we would, you know, we'd be talking about <laughs> <laughs> What happened in those yeah. two, what yeah. happened in those two weeks? What, what transpired? Can you imagine him and Coach Knight yeah, together with wow, Quinn well, Buckner? No, I can't. That's it, just, I mean. it just, it'd have been, it just, I think the basketball gods were like, no, nah, we can't let this happen. What, well, I, I wanted to go Kentucky, but Kentucky quit recruiting me, so it was down to Indiana State and IU, so I went to IU. Financially, I couldn't stay. Okay. Red just couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. couldn't do it. It wasn't I was homesick or I didn't like the coach. One thing about me, I always said the coach is coach and the players play. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever they tell you, you got to do it. You might not like it. But you got to do it. That's mm. what they do. Right. That's their expertise. I don't think me and Coach and I would have had a problem because I never had a problem with my coach. When I got to Indiana State, they were talking about me going to junior college. I go, what? I'm not going to no junior college. So I sort of played the role, and they got real serious. So I said at the end, I said, look, I'm not doing that. I got another place I can go. But I had other colleges after me, but I wasn't letting them recruit me because I wanted to go to Indiana State. They mm -hmm. Well, they, they came and watched me play in the summer. We played the Indiana High School All-Star team. I worked all day, put up hay all day, went up there, and had a monster game. All of a sudden, they didn't talk about going to junior college. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still kind of confused, y'all. Kind of help me out. He said financially, 
Indiana wouldn't have worked, but I'm sure he was on a full ride scholarship. So what about the financial situation he couldn't handle? Kind of confused, y'all. Help me out. Help me out. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. You guys are champions. You guys have won at the highest level. I never won a championship. So there's games that I always think about. Yeah. Oh, I know. That we could win. Let me tell you, Rich, I don't think about the wins. I always think, think about, about the losses. Loss. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like everybody's yeah. like it. they have never seen a final game with two greater NFL mm. players. Iconic. This is a great video. This is a great video, y'all. I'm glad that we stumbled across this. Like, this, this is good. I feel like it's given... Uh, a super, super in-depth perspective of some iconic moments from the lens of three like great iconic players. So th this is great, y'all. This is great. Magic man from East Lansing, Urban Johnson. Here's what happened in 79. We played the pole, and it was a tough game. Uh -huh. And I hit 16 out of 19 shots, I think it was. Mm. We went by two. And I know Mr. State's a lot better than the pole. Right. So we had a day in between we practiced, and I was sitting there thinking, man, I got I got to score 40 points, 45 points this game. I got to be on. I got to be at my best, or we have no chance of winning this game. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't. In all over, Michigan State University, national champions, 1979. That was a big letdown, because I thought I could rise that occasion. Right. And uh, keep us in it and maybe get it at the end. And they, they were a talented team. They had... Some really good players. Imagine the Bucks did a great job on Larry Bird in the zone tonight in the ball. He has a uh, coach uh, gave us a good game plan to go against Larry Bird, and all we had to do was go out and do it. And if we did it, he said we'll win. That's what we done. But uh, you know, we got our shot. We got our shot to play for a national championship, and you know, it was a ten or twelve point game the whole way. But we just couldn't. That would have really been nice for. For not only Indiana State, but for the city, Terre Haute, and everybody, it would been great. You know, we had a chance. We had a chance to win. I feel I'm an adopted Hoosier. You're an adopted Hoosier yeah. via Chicago. Yeah, yeah. You are a true Hoosier. Your, your impression of Indiana basketball. So when I first, you know, I'm, I'm coming from Chicago, and I go to Bloomington, Indiana, the basketball, I'm going to say spirituality of, of Indiana you feel it Facts. when you when you walk into any gym. I was just going to say that. I don't know why I didn't mention that at the beginning of this video. But, yeah, Indiana is known for their basketball. I'm from Ohio. Ohio borders Indiana. So, I had so many AAU tournaments and just a lot of stuff. I think even my senior year, I played in the Ohio versus Indiana game. So, like, I involved myself in basketball with Indiana a lot. And the, the, the culture behind basketball in Indiana is super high. If you don't know anything about it, do your research. Indiana basketball is huge. It's huge. So I think it's super great they was able to have these three people be connected to Indiana in some way. Whether it be the Hyper, the Recreation Gym, or any, any building that has a gymnasium, there's a religious spirituality about the game that, that you have to honor. Sure. And in Indiana, everybody can shoot. Yeah. <laughs> he, said not, he said everybody, not everybody. Not miss open shots. <laughs> There's a spirituality about I the think game. the coolest thing for me about Indiana basketball was on my days off, and we weren't playing for the Pacers, was going to those high school games on yeah. Friday and Saturday yeah. nights. Those smaller arenas that they hold, you know, 250, yeah. 500 people. Yeah. And there's, you know, a thousand people yeah. in there and everyone's standing up the whole game. Those were, those are awe-inspiring moments to see these because this is, yeah. th this is their NBA championship for some of these high school kids. High school, it was crazy because we, our gymnasium held 2,700. We get probably 35 in there. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> College. 800 people standing. You know, I think we see passed in about 10,000 and they could have got 15,000 there in terrible Felt that. back right. then but back when I was a kid we had basketball courts all over our town and if you went out in the country there'd be a basketball court on a, on a barn on a hoop, somewhere on a barn. Yeah. I mean that's the way it was mm -hmm. so to me that's what basketball is all about community coming together everybody involved 
when you're in a small community, there's got to be something there to bring everybody together. Sure. Or everybody's yeah, that's what I feel that. Know, that's what sports does. You know, tries to bring people together. And that's where we're going to end this first video at. I appreciate y'all for watching. That was a great, like, introduction video. Um, I'm going to get this video out quick, and then we're going to get part two out quick as well. But I appreciate y'all for watching. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. This is about to be a super great, uh, I would say, three-episode uh, series. So make sure y'all like this video. If you like this video, and go ahead and write something in the comments. Let me know what other videos y'all want me to react to. And stay tuned for part two. But I appreciate y'all, like always. We out.